Good morning. Welcome to At Eight. This is Pastor Karen at Radiant Life, and I'm glad to be sharing with you this morning. As Pastor Ryan mentioned yesterday, we are, are mixing things up a little bit, and so I'm happy to join you on Tuesday mornings. So that if you're if you're not familiar uh, with At Eight with Pastor Karen, I do record this time together, not because I don't want to greet you by name or interact with you, because I really do, but simply because I live in a very rural area with very unreliable internet, and after having things freeze up during a live broadcast and experiencing a lot of frustration and consternation, we just decided to just go ahead and, and record these. But I am with you live um, while this is being broadcast and I'm watching the comments, I'm ready to greet you, ready to interact with you because it's, it's really important um, that we have a relationship with you. So please feel free to comment, interact, and, and share this. This morning I'd like to just share a few thoughts on prayer. We are uh, at the tail end of our SWAT teaching series at, here at Radiant Life, uh, which is Spiritual Warfare and Tactics. Pastor JB gave a powerful teaching last Sunday on the sword of the spirit, which is God's word. And a lot of people think, okay, we're done. That's all the pieces of the armor from the helmet and the belt, excuse me, to the weapon of the sword, and we're done, right? But Paul isn't. Paul continues in Ephesians 6, 18, and let me read. Uh, Paul says this. He says, And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, and when you're thinking about engaging in spiritual warfare, uh, pray with alertness to that warfare that's going on. And always keep on praying for all the saints. Now whenever the scripture talks about saints, we're not talking about uh, saints from um, a church perspective, uh, like St. Thomas or um, St. Teresa, we're simply talking, Scripture's simply talking about those who are believers, those who have accepted Christ as their personal Savior and are in relationship with Him. So by that defin definition, excuse me, you're a saint, I'm a saint. And whether or not you have pictured yourself as a saint before, um, that is how God's Word refers to you. And then Paul continues, and what you have to know about Paul, Paul is not the pastor of the Church of Ephesus. He was the church planter. Uh, Timothy, his protege, is a pastor at this point in time. Paul is in Rome uh, for preaching the gospel. He's in prison. And so Paul's saying, uh, keep praying for me because one thing about Paul, he didn't stop preaching and sharing God's word and sharing about Jesus when he was in prison. He just saw that as, as new territory. So, uh, new guard, new prisoners, uh, at this point I think Paul was still being allowed some visitors. Whoever Paul came in contact with, he shared, he shared uh, the good news of Jesus. So here's what Paul asks, um, his prayer request. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, and I like that, whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Why is that word fearlessly in there? Paul's talking about engaging in spiritual warfare. Can you imagine the darts and um, the ways that Satan was trying to come against him as he's in chains for preaching about Jesus? So I mean, fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I'm an ambassador in chains. And he concludes it. Pray that I might declare it fearlessly as I should. So even as Paul was asking uh, for prayer for himself, I believe that we can go back to that verse that says, keep on praying for the saints. That as we pray for each other, uh, we pray for our pastors that we will fearlessly preach the gospel through not just what we say, by uh, speaking words of hope and uh, sharing Jesus Christ, but just by our attitudes, that the things that we say and do would be honoring to God and be done for the sake of his name. Another writer um, who references prayer is Jesus' half-brother, James. And again, probably a passage that's uh, familiar to a lot of you. But in James 5, he says, Is any one of you in trouble? 
Now he's talking to the saints here. Is anyone in, of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? He should sing songs of praise. Our praise, our adoration, our worship is a form of prayer. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And then James says, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. How do we engage in battle? We put on the armor of God. We take up the sword of the spirit, but then we pray because the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You know, as Paul begins the book of Ephesians, uh, he prays for the believers, the saints at Ephesus. And some of the things he prays, he prays that they would be filled with knowledge and insight and revelation. They will be filled with the knowledge um, of the power of the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit works in and through us. There's power in prayer. You know, you and I are engaged in spiritual battle every day, whether we realize it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not. We have just encouraged you to start the day with some, with some quiet times, time with the Lord in God's word, his sword, and in prayer. The overarching principle um, that enables us to be effective in our warfare. Let's pray this morning. Father, you are so gracious. You want us to know you. You want us to share the hope that we have because of Jesus Christ. Thank you just for these moments together to get into your word. And may we continue to pray for each other and that the things we think and say and do might be honoring to your name and be, may be done in, for the sake of your name. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. Amen. Have an effective day. Enjoy. See you next time.